created because we serve a creative God. A church that does not look for inspiration from anyone else but from Jesus. A church that is committed to serving its community. A church full of hope. A church bursting with joy. A church that is alive. A church that has love. A church that loves God and loves people. A church that is committed to serving God. We are all about connecting people to God.
Oh God, we thank you for fighting for us, so oh Lord. We face so many trials, we face so many tribulations, but we fight for us, so oh Lord. We thank you, Lord. Founder of the soil, 
You're stronger for the weak. You hear our every question. Take care of every need. In your eyes, we're all equal. By your blood, we're all free. of my mouth, meditation of our hearts be pleasing, to you, O oh God, O oh God, in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can, can we
we just remain in the same attitude of worship? And I'm just going to ask Tato to just sing one more song and we'll get going. Like you, Lord, you deserve the glory, Lord. You deserve the glory.
thank you because you said in your word and because you are true. You said you will inhabit the praises of your children. So we have no doubt that you are in this place. Not is it just a visitation, but it's a transforming moment. A time where you want to do something in your, pe in your children's lives, oh Lord. Father, it's not about any of us, but it's about you. So we are here to celebrate you and your goodness. We're cele here to celebrate you in your love, O oh Lord. And I thank you that we declare that we can't be the same. We can't leave this place the same because you are in this place. So let it be that you are a river that is flowing into us and flowing out of us we declare that the world cannot be the same as long as we are around. Who are we? That you are so mindful of us. Who are we? That you are so mindful of us, oh Lord. And in this moment, we all declare that we were once young and now we are old. Yet we have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor their children begging for bread. We believe it all for our lives. That you are at the right hand of the Father, O oh God. And that you are upholding us. That you are upholding us, O oh Lord holding us above everything, above it all, oh God. Holy Spirit, have free reign. Touch, heal, deliver. Touch and heal and deliver, oh God. Move in the lives of your children right now, oh Lord. We have free reign, oh God. Descend on your children right now, Holy Spirit. Descend right now, Lord. Fresh grace. Fresh anointing. Descend on your children right now, oh God. Do what you want to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Like a hammer, break away at any stones. Like a hammer, break away at any rocks. We declare that there's no resistance in this place. And that there's nobody who will hinder you and stop, stop you from moving in their lives, oh God. Because it's not their lives, it's your life. It's not their lives, it's your life. And I thank you, oh God that you begin to flow, that you begin to move. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Whoever is joining us from online, there's no distance in prayer. Touch them where they are right now. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. Everybody who believes it said, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. I'm sensitive not to say shout in this moment. I'm sensitive enough to just say, just give God praise in this moment. Amen. <laughs> just give God praise. But I am going to ask you, 
if we could just give honor where honor is due. The volunteers in this ministry are amazing. <laughs> I, I was praying at the back, Mama Ophelia, and, and I felt like I was disturbing them by being at the back. And Leanne kept on saying to me, one more thing, we just need to do one more thing. And, and I felt like I was in the way because we, as they were preparing communion elements and doing everything, they are preparing it, but they are praying at the same time. It was such a blessing thing to see. It was a blessing thing just to experience. I wish you guys could experience it, experience it as they are putting things together. And I'm trusting that they are trusting in their hearts and I'm joining with their faith to say, Whatever it is that they are doing and they are putting their hands to has to prosper in your lives as they are praying over it. Amen. And then I don't even know what to say about the ones behind me because they are just. <laughs> they are just simply amazing. Amen. The ladies behind me are just simply amazing. I don't know what to say about the gents at the back. They are ensuring that everything <laughs> is running around smoothly. And Pastor Bongi, I want to honor you as well and say the order in which things are done. We just want to praise God for you. <laughs> Amen. Because you can see nobody is doing anything for show. Everybody is doing it in an orderly manner so that the Lord is continued and, and is just glorified and glorified and glorified. Amen. As you take your seats, could I ask you to just turn to your neighbor? This is a turning to your neighbor day. I know last week was about you. Today is a turning to your neighbor day. Say, neighbor, I know you probably missed me last week, but I had to talk to myself. But now I'm going to talk to you, neighbor. And I want to tell you, you are looking really good this morning. You look really, really, really good, neighbor. Uh, and it's such an honor to do church next to you. And I'm sure our particular role is going to be on fire for God this morning. <laughs> Praise God. As you turn to your neighbor one more time, tell them, neighbor, it's a pulpit not a boat. It's a pulpit, not a boat. You might have thought it was a boat, but I'm here to tell you it is a pulpit and you may take your seats. Ooh. It's going to be so good, nice and short and to the point, but very good. I am so happy for you because I was so blessed in the week by the Lord. I thought that the Lord couldn't top it. And then Mopai and her girls were here and then they took it to another level. And I was just like, you just, you just can't help it in this church but just to praise God. And maybe before I continue, let me just tell you that Pastor Siswe sends his message of love. Uh, we found out yesterday that there's a lady who's just joined the church um, not so long ago. <laughs> She's probably been in the church for about a month now, over a month, a little over a month. And she said she moved from Captain Park into this particular area, but she was crying when she left that area because she was like, yeah, I am going to miss my pastors. And it turned out that she came from Pastor Siswe's church. And then when she came to this church, she said, I found similarities. It was just, it, it felt similar. It felt like home. It felt the same. It felt the same as it does on the other side. And I phoned Pastor Siswe and I said to Pastor Siswe, do you know this lady? And Pastor Siswe here said, yes, she's such a blessing. And now she's in the ministry as well. So I told Pastor Siswe about it and he celebrated. 
and he said, I must send messages of love to the church. And he said, he will definitely, definitely see you within the next month. So I'm going to play this back to him so that he knows that I've told you guys that he said he will be back here in the next month. I also had a chat with Pastor Bemi, and Pastor Bemi said, I owe that ministry a visit, and I will definitely be there very soon. She didn't say in the next month. She said, I will be there very soon. She said, my son, I have been watching the sermons online. As a matter of fact, she said, I finish church and I go and watch online. She said, I am coming there not to minister, but to sit under the word, because the word that is going out from that place is extremely powerful. So for someone like Pastor Bemi to say it gave us so much confidence and affirmation to know beyond knowing that we are in the right direction. And the funny thing is that Pastor Bemi is also preaching on Job 42. So if you were here on Wednesday, you would know that we were talking about Job 42. When I got there and she asked me what the Lord has been saying, I told her about Job 42. And then she said, please go to my Bible right now because we're in her office. She said, please go to my Bible and see what I am studying currently. And she was also on Job 42. So she is pretty excited about that which God is getting ready to release over your lives. Amen. I'm very excited about it. Come with me to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Thank you. And we are going to read from verse 1. We had such a powerful message from the Lord last week. It had nothing to do with me. It's God's word on this particular scripture. And I'm reading it from the message translation. And it reads as follows. Moses objected. They won't trust me. They won't listen to a word I say. They're going to say, God appeared to him hardly. So God said, what's that in your hand? What's that in your hand? A staff. He said, throw it on the ground. He threw it and it became a snake. Moses jumped back fast. God said to Moses, reach out and grab it by the tail. He reached out and grabbed it, and he was holding his staff again. That's so, that's so they will trust that God appeared to you, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Amen? What's that in your hand? What is that in your hand? Is it possible that what is in your hand, because I'm going to flip it from next week, but continue with the thought of next week. Is it possible that that which is in your hand is your pulpit? How powerful is your ministry? Is it possible that the computer that you carry in your hand and you hold in your hand is your pulpit? And I'm here to ask you, how powerful is your ministry? How many people are attending that ministry? How many people are part of that ministry? How many people are influenced by that ministry? How many people are changed by that ministry? How many people's lives are transformed by that ministry? What's that in your hand? Is it possible that you overlooked something that God is using as his pulpit? Is it possible that you are holding something that is going to propel you into your purpose? Is it possible that what's in your hand is actually your destination? Maybe you thought your destination is coming in three years' time and God is saying that which is in your hand is part of the destination. Your destination has come to you right now. Is it possible that the Bible that you are holding in your hand is your pulpit? Is it possible that the word that you have in your spirit is your pulpit? Is it possible that you are possibly a pulpit and you never knew anything about it? Because if I can hold, handle a staff, throw it to the ground, it becomes a snake, and then handle it again, it becomes, it means there is something about me as well. 
If I can take a stick, throw it to the ground, and when I throw it to the ground, it turns into a snake, and then I grab it by the tail, it turns into a stick again. Is it possible that there's something about me that is pulpit-like, that is supposed to draw men to me, but it's not ultimately drawing men to me, but it's drawing men to Jesus Christ? Is it possible that your life is a pulpit and you never knew? Because I know that the Bible, Mom Gold, speaks about a living epistle. Is it possible that you are the living word? The world became life and it dwelt amongst us. Died for our sins and then came to dwell in us. Is it possible that we are driven by a living word so we become a living word? Is it possible that when you walk wherever the sole of your foot steps on, is it possible that you are taking up possession and you didn't even know that you are taking up possession? Is it possible that you are a pulpit that has no clue that they are a pulpit? Is it possible that where God has placed you right now, he's placed his podium? Is it possible that where you go, God is out here saying, there it is. And that's the one I'm going to preach from. That's the place I'm going to minister from. That's the place I'm going to move from. That's the place I'm going to deliver from. That's the place I'm going to heal from. Those are the hands that I'm going to use. That's the mouth that I'm going to use. Is it possible that you overlooked yourself not knowing that God is saying, this is the pulpit that I'm going to flow from? Is it possible that in the I will never forsake you, I will never leave you, because he doesn't forsake you not, 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 and, and not leave you for no apparent reason. reason. He says, I don't forsake you, I don't leave you, because I actually want to flow in you. I actually want to flow out of you. And that you walked around, and you were out here, and you said, ah, my name is Uncle John not knowing that your name is Uncle John Christ. My name is Leanne Christ. My name is Joyce Christ. My name is Louisa Christ. Yeah, there's Louisa here, but there's a deity that lives in the inside of this Louisa. And when that deity comes out and it flows out of Louisa, I'm here to tell somebody that this company can remain the same. Because from this altar, from this place, is where you are going to see signs and wonders and see God flowing out of me. My name is Christian Christ. My name is Christian Christ. Robert Christ. Tepo Christ. Talk to me, somebody. Lena Christ. Mopa Christ. Precious Christ. Tosh Christ. Brian Christ. Because I've got a deity that lives on the inside of me. And whenever I need to give way, I give way. And he flows out of me. And he moves out of me. My commitment to my job is not my commitment to my job. It's my commitment to my God. My commitment to the things that I'm not doing. Are not my commitment to the things that I'm doing. It's about the deity that is in me. It's about the God that is flowing in me. That I am doing the things that I'm doing for. I give way all the time. I give way all the time. I, I set out, Auntie Cheryl, as I, as, I, as I had said on Wednesday. And I said, I don't want, dis I don't want anyone to disturb me. I don't want anything. Pastor Mike will tell you. He laughs about it and he came to, because he was doing some, some duties for the Lord around the church on Monday. He came to the church, he found me on my knees by the pulpit and he came in and he said, I don't want to disturb this moment very much, Pastor, but I'm just here to just report what had happened. Uh, 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 and I've never seen Pastor Mike leave me that quickly. When we are together, if we talk on the phone, We've been saying of late that calls will last for an hour, over an hour. We just go, we just go and keep going. But he said, I don't want to disturb this moment, and, and, and he left me alone. A and on Monday, I was praying for the church, and I was praying for all of you guys, and I was praying that 
that, that there's something is, is, is manifested in your lives. Uh, and, and I was just praying for everybody. You know, I, in the men's group, we took it a step further. I even asked for prayer requests. Uh, and people sent requests. Uh, and I recall, I, I'm sure Brian doesn't mind me sharing, is that uh, uh, I even had a word for Brian that, say, that he said, this is confirmation because this is what I've been studying. And I knew that the Lord was, was, was in the place. And I know that the Lord is in this place this morning. One of the things that I played, prayed for in, in the week was to say, Lord, I need people to be employed for those that are unemployed. Four people have signed their contracts this week. gloating on myself, I'm gloating on the Lord. Because people have a tendency of believing that when I pray, it has to. It's a good thing to believe, but don't be considered enough to think that it's about you. It's a good thing. It's a good confidence to know that when I pray as Louisa, things are going to happen, but it's not about me, but it's about God. But, but, but as we prayed, as I prayed here, and I was praying, and I was praying, and, and, and God was doing his thing, four people assigned contracts this week, and I'm here to tell those four people that it's not about you about the fact that God is creating a pulpit in that, in that particular environment. God is saying, I need a pulpit in the job where you are. I need a pulpit in the place where you got employed in. It's not about the money. I know that you probably sat there and you were in an, inter in an interview and you were discussing the money. It was never about that because if I want to bless you, I'll open up windows from heaven and there will be a release over your life. I can bless you if I can feed the ravens. I can do something for you. It's not about the money, but it's about me creating a pulpit of entry into that particular, en that particular environment. How is it that God is so mindful of you that he says, oh, for Neletsi, there's a pulpit that I need and Bongi is going to be that pulpit. He's not going to say, Pastor Bongi, by the way, so I'm not disrespecting you. He says, Bongi is that pulpit that I'm going to place in Neletsi and the blessings of the Lord are going to flow through you. How, mi how mindful God must be of you to say in Edenvale High, there's a pulpit that I need and Cheryl Dean is going to be that pulpit that I'm going to use. It, 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 I need to flow in her and I need to flow out of her. Is it possible that the positions that God has placed you in, he didn't place you there for the money. He didn't place you so that you look good. He didn't place you just for placing you, but he said, I need a pulpit in this place. How's your church? How's your ministry? How's your ministry going? Is it possible that God is ready to flow through you and out of you in your school? How's the school going? How's the ministry in the school going? Please come with me to my text scripture. It's about to get exciting. I always say, I love my mother because my mother is my pulpit. Because she always ministered. I love Mom Joyce. Mom Joyce is a pulpit. A lot of you do not understand what Mom Joyce meant to me in a time where it was not favorable for me. She was a pulpit. Try and talk to Mom Joyce and see that it's not pleasant to talk to Mom Joyce. She looks sweet. She looks sweet. Before you go to her, I challenge you to be ready. Don't go to Mom Joyce ready to cry. Go to Mom Joyce ready to come out with your confidence. Mom Joyce is going to tell you, this is not you. This crying baby is not you. Snap out of it. Mom Joyce will make you snap out of places very quickly. And when you come out, because the anointing on her life, she realizes you will come out actually walking stronger. You will come out walking taller because this is somebody who said, I am a pulpit. My life is a pulpit. So if you dare come to me one-on-one, -on -one, and Rich, I, I, I think she thrives there, one-on-one. -on -one. If you dare come to me one-on-one, -on -one, you'll come back stronger. You'll come back with the Lord. You'll walk out of that place with the Lord. How is your ministry going, Pastor Lina? Luke chapter 5. And I know that when you talk to Pastor Lina, yay. She's a mini version of a mom Joyce. She also will tell you very quickly. <laughs> Lena says things like, I love you. Like, you know, I, 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 I love so and so because they are my parent, but I needed to say. <laughs> you know, and somebody says, I love you, but 
I needed to. <laughs> and when you come out, when Lena has spoken, you will feel explosive. An explosiveness about you because she's an explosive pastor. Luke chapter 5, uh, verses 1 to 11. Pastor Bungi, you're about to hear one of Jesus' teachings. He taught, the Bible says. Once when he was standing on the shore of the lake of Gennesaret, this is the Sea of Galilee, the crowd was pushing in on him to better hear the word of God. The crowd was pushing in on him to better hear the word of God. Let's stop. The crowd was pushing in on him to better hear the word of God. You see, when we're telling you that we want this ministry growing, it's because we are saying, Lord, there's an anointing that has been released in this ministry. And where there's an anointing that has been released on in the ministry, Hey, don't stop us from growing. There was a crowd that was pushing to get to Jesus. Did he? They were pushing in on him. They wanted to get to him. You know, I always say to people, it's not that you fell in love with me. I'm wise enough to know that you never fell in love with me because if you got to know the real me, you know the real me. You know, even in the front, I'm not good examples. <laughs> If you got to know the real me, <laughs> you, 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 you might realize that you actually don't like the real me. I'm wise enough to know that people don't like me for me. People like me because there's a God that is flowing in me. And it's my responsibility then to say, let me point them to the God in me. Because if you really got to know the real me, you would realize that the real me is a very awkward somebody. is an extremely awkward somebody. So that's why I say the guys in the front are very strong because they're very close to somebody who's extremely awkward. But, 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 but because I realize people that, that people love the Jesus in me, I don't confuse it. And I don't stop it. So you need to not stop and confuse that people are coming to you and thinking that there's something about you. There is something about you. There is a somebody that is about you. And it's Jesus Christ. So it is imperative that when they're pressing in on you that they hear. It was in you that they were after. It was the anointing in the word of God. It was the power in the word of God that they are after. You were out here thinking that I maybe, maybe this day since I've been bathing with milk, hey, and my light in complexion is, is just working in my favor. Since I'm like looking, there's something that's just handsome about me. I know that I'm handsome, but like I think now I'm extra handsome, uh, Brizo. And then you actually find out that people are not even after the looks. They're not even after anything. They are just after the word of God. If people could press in on somebody that grew up in the wilderness because he had the word of God, they they, 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 they don't care about the looks. They don't care about the feels. They pressed in on John the Baptist, smelling as he was. Because there was the word of God that was there. Press in. Press in. They were pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God. He noticed two boats tied up. The fishermen had just left them and were out scra scrubbing their nets. Let me, let me put it this way. So, so, so whenever fishermen were finished fishing, they would go and clean their nets. Say, you know what, let's clean up our nets. Uh, it's fine, we are done for the day. So we are cleaning up our nets, signifying that, yeah, no, you know what? Let's clean up, let's do our things, and then let's go home. Oh, Pastor Boingi, I pray. And I earnestly pray with the kind of order that you have in the beginning, that there will be an order afterwards as well. 
to know for your ministry that I'm not going to leave my station in any way. I'm going to clean up my nets. I, I, I'm talking about your office, which is your pulpit, to say I'm going to leave this in an orderly manner. I'm just not going to leave it because now it's time to go home. I'm going to leave it in an orderly manner. I'm going to clean up the nets. I'm going to do certain things because when they look at Louisa's spot, they need to know that there's a child of God who works on there. While I'm cleaning up my nets, I'm going to be sensitive enough to know that it might not even be time to go home, but let's talk about it. He climbed. The fishermen had just left them and were scrub out scrubbing their nets. He climbed into the bo boat that was Simon's and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Sitting there using the boat. For a what? Using the boat for a what? Using the boat for a pulpit, he taught the crowd. Using the boat for a pulpit, he taught the crowd. When he finished teaching, he says to Simon, push out into the deep water and let your nets out for a catch. Simon said, Master, we've been fishing hard all night and haven't caught even a minnow. But if you say so, I let out the nets. I know I had packed up to go home, and it was time for me to go see Amashe. It was time for me to go see Mutrudi. It was time for me to go see Velemina and Precious. I know that I had packed up, and it was time for me to go home. But because you say so, oh God. Lord, you, you, you don't even get it, Lord. Like, I cleaned up these nets. I was ready to go home. I was ready to go home. And I said to you, Bongi, at the beginning, that, that, sorry, Pastor Bongi, I said to you, Pastor Bongi, that at the beginning, that this, 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 this is a time where we're going to get to hear t Jesus teaching. And the Bible says he teaches and he finishes. I want to know what he's teaching. They don't tell us what he's teaching. And is it possible that in, in them not telling us what he was teaching, that he actually was teaching this? The whole story was that Jesus went to a boat, into someone's boat, that he knew that didn't know him. Peter didn't know him at that time. In fact, Peter wasn't Peter at that time. His name was Simon. Simon did not know Jesus at the time. Jesus was a stranger to Simon. Simon had just finished cleaning up his nets. Simon had just finished cleaning up his boat. And there a stranger walks into his boat and says, pull this boat to the shore. And when you pull this boat to the shore, I need to preach from this boat. It is, that, is, it, it, it is at this point where many of us say, I don't even know you. You are a stranger to me. You come into my space. You come into my boat. And you are coming to dictate what needs to happen in my boat. It is at this moment where many of us have shut our purpose down. We've shut our purpose up. Because we are so arrogant with our nature. We are so mean by nature when we are created to be good. The, the fruits of the spirit are not exercised in our nature. And that's why, Pastor Bongi, it's hard when God says, go out into the world and preach the gospel. It's hard to go to talk to strangers about Jesus. Because of our nature. I, I, I'm trying to picture Simon. Not Peter. Simon. Saying no. Get out of my boat. Who are you? It's possible. That your purpose is packaged in a way that you are not anticipating it to be packaged in. 
it's possible that the one who's going to propel you into your destiny, you don't know. Doesn't look the part, doesn't feel the part, but is going to come into your boat and say, your name is not Simon. Your name is Peter. And on you, my church will be built. But because a stranger walked into my space, I rejected my purpose by saying no. One of God's promises, I met with a yes and a resounding that comes from us. All of God's promises are yes and are met with a resounding. Amen. It is possible that when on the moment that you never said amen to the stranger walking in, the pulpit that God was getting ready to use for you to realize that you are a pulpit yourself, that you probably said no to the ministry. Auntie Ophelia, some of the things that we are going to be instructed to do are so simple by nature. But if we obey these simple things, <laughs> it determines how you live for the rest of your life. It determines how meaningful the rest of your life is. They are simple by nature, Didi. All, 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 all somebody did when he got into the boat is to say, j -j -j just move it a bit in. There's a crowd that is pressing in on me. And I imagine that Simon didn't see the crowd. He just saw Jesus. Because if he had seen the crowd, you would have wanted to know while he was cleaning up his nets what is going on. So Jesus gets into his boat and he says, just, just, just move it in. Just move it in. It's possible because we don't know people that we are stopping what God wants to do. Because sometimes God is going to send something that is not familiar to you. And I can see Pastor Bongi trying to retrace her life and just check her life and say, where did it go wrong in my life? I, I, it's okay. There's a grace of God that fills in for that place. I'm not here to, to preach condemnation. But it's possible that there are certain things that you stopped in your life and you said no to in your life when God was saying, this is what I was going to use to propel you into your purpose. leave that stuff. When he finished teaching, he said to Simon, he finished teaching. What's the teaching? Push out into deep water and let your nets out for a catch. Simon said, Master, we've been fishing hard all night. We haven't caught even a minnow, but if you say so, I'll let out the nets. The nets. It, was so soon, it was no sooner said than done. A huge haul of fish straining the nets past capacity. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to come to you now, Mom Ophelia. Past capacity. They waved to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. They filled both boats, nearly swamping them with the catch. Oh, I, I, I'm here to sell, tell somebody, I need you to just be in obedience and see as God surpasses your capacity. Not just meet you at your capacity. Not just filling up to your capacity. Just through your simple obedience, surpassing your capacity so that it flows out of you to say, let me call on my partners. And maybe that's something else we need to talk about. Simon had partners. Meaning Simon was a successful somebody. You may have partners if you're not successful. He had partners. Meaning Simon was a successful bus businessman who had partners. People had partnered up with him. <laughs> and the way I've seen life is that the more successful you are, the more you are not told. The 
more arrogant you become. Am I talking to real people? Have you seen people walking with their chin up? Walking like no one is allowed to talk to them? Not just anyone can talk to them. But Simon had a deeper revelation of success. So much so that he was willing to even listen to a stranger. What am I trying to tell you? The higher God takes you, the more humble you become. The higher God takes you, your humility got you there. Your humility got you there. Your servanthood, your servant heart got you there. Don't get there and say, look at me now. It is at this point where you've messed up the pulpit. It is at this point where you've messed up the pulpit. If I got here and I say, look at me now. It is at this point where you messed up the pulpit. God is out here saying, I'm writing a story. It's my story. All the things that you went through, that's a pulpit. Oh, Pastor Wengi is finding it hard to even take notes. It's hard. Just like thinking a lot. All the things that you went through is a pulpit. Your, sc your scars are a pulpit. <laughs> your scars are a pulpit. I told you about a Pastor Bemi who said to us, the mistakes that you made, my son, the mistakes that I made, my son, you are never going to make them because my mistakes are my pulpit. Your, your, your scars are a pulpit. The things that you went through, when somebody goes through them, you say not in my name, but more importantly, not in the name of Jesus Christ. Not when Christian Christ is around. The, the Christian me went through these hardships, but the Christ in Christian got him through the, the, the hardships. So I'm here to say, not in my name will you suffer the things that I suffered from. Your blessings are a pulpit. Your blessings are a pulpit. You know why God says give? And it shall be given back to you. He says give because he has an understanding that this is a pulpit and this needs to minister. If you really go and study it properly, bring the tithe into the storehouse. So that what? So that there is food in my house. So your tithe is what? It's something that is preaching to somebody who needs to eat. What do you eat? We eat our daily bread. We eat the word of God. So you, your tithing is also speaking as a pulpit. Because once you can tithe, it means God has been able to bless you to tithe. He's blessed you with seed to be able to tithe. So when you've got that seed, you are sitting with the seed on the other side and you are saying, this is my pulpit. How successful is your ministry? Simon, Peter, verse 8 again, when he saw it, fell to his knees before Jesus. Master, leave. I'm a sinner and can't handle this holiness. Leave me to myself. <laughs> I'm going to try and find the African version, Mamophilia. <laughs> but, but the Kosa Zulu version is, I, 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 Magayekwe Uyesu. When you must just be left alone. I am experienced in fishing. I have never seen anything like this. Jesus, I, 
I have, I have been fishing all my life. But this, this is the first time I'm successful in what I do. I'm successful in my ministry. I'm successful in being, in being a fisherman. That this, I, yo, uh, uh, leave me. I, I, I can't handle this. I can't handle you. Yo, I, Yazi, you must be left alone. This is the kind of blessing that God wants to bring to your house. To say, yay, I, they must, I am not deserving of all of this. I cannot believe this favor has come upon me. Just simply by allowing you to just stand on me and what I own so that you can use it as a pulpit. get carried away guys can we <laughs> when they pulled in the cash the catch of fish <laughs> i wish you could see it in the message all overwhelmed <coughs> all overwhelmed simon and everyone with him they were not only in awe going they were also overwhelmed that the Bible just has to say, oh, overwhelmed. Simon and everyone with him. It was the same with James and John, Zebedee's sons, co-workers with Jesus. Jesus said to Simon, there is nothing to fear. From now on, you'll be fishing for men and women. They pulled, up, they pulled their boats up on the beach, left them, nets and all, and followed him. Nets and all. <coughs> I, I, I need to preach about that for two seconds. I need to talk about that for, for two seconds. Nets and all. What did Jesus find them doing? They were cleaning their nets because they had come back from cleaning, uh, from, from fishing. And they were cleaning their nets in the beginning. And while they were cleaning their nets in the beginning, they said, you know what, tonight, eh, shame, one of those nights. You know, experience will tell you this is one of those nights. The weather is not good. The fish is not, it's not here. The fish is not around here. Probably the fish has gone somewhere else. Eh, but it's not around where we are fishing. It's not in our place, in our vicinity of fishing. And they, there they were, Deirdre, and they were cleaning their nets, my sweetheart. And they cleaned these nets. And they cleaned them and they cleaned them because they had told themselves, you know what, uh, I'm going to go home early today, you know, at least my wife gets to see me early tonight, so it's cool, so I know that Ruth is going to be excited, because husband is back early tonight, so there they are cleaning up their nets, now the very same nets that they were cleaning up they had not caught anything. Now they have caught uh, fish so humongous that they are in awe. A a a a and what's the other word? They are in awe and they are overwhelmed. The very same fish, they are like, hey, I have in net, these nets now, we don't care anything about the nets. We've caught the fish. We've done everything that we need to do. My partners will handle the business. But you know what? There's something special about that one that I don't care about cleaning up anymore. I'm going after that one. You can imagine, Auntie Cheryl, that it means that you will clean the nets much more because you caught much more fish this time around. But because there were, they, they, they were so much fish that were caught through Jesus Christ, they could not be bothered about the catch anymore. They were bothered about the person who made them catch. They were bothered about the source to say, I'm leaving everything behind. I'm chasing after the source. I'm running after the source. I'm running after Jesus. I'm going for Jesus and nothing else. Nothing matters. It's all and all and all about Jesus Christ. If he can do this in one day. If he can do this in one day. What does two days look like for me? If he can do this in one day, what does one week look like for me? If he can do this in a few minutes, what does one year look like him? Like look like for me? If he can do this in a few minutes, what does a lifetime look like for me? What's she up here? Left them behind. Like, yo, my business is going to succeed. With that kind of cash, catch, my business is going to succeed. And it's going to succeed well only if I chase after this one. It's symbolic. They pulled their boats up on the beach. Yeah. This is after Mom Ophelia. Hey, Elebut, you lost. Hmm. 
Mabagi, yeah, yes, yes, Jesus, ne? I, I, the, you know, Peter is saying the same thing that he said it is death. He said, hey, I cannot afford to die the same death that my master died. Yet rather turn me upside down because, yea, he is the son of God. When I was perishing, the, when I was perishing, the son, not the child, the, the son of God stepped in. When I was perishing, the son, oh, I am so loved by the father that he gave me the son. That whoever believes in anything that the son will say shall not perish. I, yeah, I was perishing. That night we were discouraged. This is one of those nights where we were toiling all night and we were tired. We were ready to give in. We were ready to give up. Psalm 139. <laughs> Psalm 139. I'm going to read it in the message. I was reading the message, as you can see. Psalm 139. Verses 13 to 16 says this. Oh, yes. Psalm 139, verse 13 says, Oh, yes, in the message. You shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. Can I, can I, can I speak to some wombs? Is that okay? Do you allow me? Mamfundis, please come stand next to me. When I speak to some moms, Dr. Micah, it's my sister. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I'm speaking to some moms. And I'm here to tell everybody in this place that your womb is a pulpit. A life-giving pulpit. Your wombs give life. Out of your wombs flows life. I'm here to tell some people, they might have told you that your wombs don't give life. I'm here to tell you they lied. Your wombs give life. Out of that pulpit is going to flow life. When we stand here, we are giving life-giving words. These are life-giving words. These are life words. These are, this, these are the, this is the truth, the life, and the way that we are preaching. There is abundant life that is flowing from this pulpit. I'm here to tell somebody that out of your womb is going to flow life. They might have told you that you, yours is not going to, but I'm here to tell you that if you would dedicate it to the Lord, if you would give it back to the Lord, the Lord is saying, I'm going to preach use life. I'm going to give life out of your womb because your womb is not just a womb. Your womb is a pulpit. This is a pulpit where I am ministering from. This is a pulpit where I am shaping things first from the inside and then out in your womb. I'm here to speak to some wombs. I'm here to speak to some wombs in your businesses. I'm here to speak to some wombs in your life. I'm here to speak to some wombs in your jobs. I'm here to speak to some wombs in your marriages. I'm here to speak to some wombs in your families to say that which was not giving life. I'm saying it's a pulpit and God is saying I'm using that story as a pulpit and that story is going to give life. You, you, your, your crying was a pulpit. Your rejoicing was a pulpit. Your everything that was happening in the story, your dancing and sitting down was a pulpit. It is going to minister where there was no life, there will be life because that pulpit is not dead in Jesus' name. Oh. I believe from a pulpit, God begins to form things. If you don't believe it, Pastor Mike, I know that you know it very well. That Uncle John was not well in this ministry. And he was out there in the pews until he decided to say, lay me down here. Because 
if this altar be an altar for the Lord, because in the Old Testament, whenever they built stones, they built stones and they said, this is what I remember about the Lord. This is what I know about this Lord. This place shall be called this because this is what I know about God. And so Uncle John says, place me at that altar. But this, because this is what I know about God. If God be true, then God is a healer. If God be true, then God is a deliverer. If God be true, then God is provision. If God be true, then God is my peace. Place me at that altar because out of that altar is what is going to flow that is coming from the Lord. Uncle John realized that the pulpit is a life-giving place. It's a place where God is forming some things. I'm here to tell somebody, believe it or not, some things are beginning to form around you. Some things are beginning to form in your life. There are certain things that you are going to get back to and you will not recognize them because God would have stepped in and formed. Oh. Akila, you might have not known, but apparently the hand of God was on your womb. <laughs> With needles and all. Akila, you might have not known. You might have just thought this was between you and Chris. And I'm here to tell you that it had nothing to do with you and Chris. You might have thought that the Lord forsook you. But the mere fact that you are sitting there and you are sitting with pregnancy. I'm here to tell you that the Lord was. Because apparently every child that is in the womb, the Lord was like. Apparently the Lord just got into wombs and and is busy with the so, so who dare anybody tell you that your womb cannot produce when the Lord is like uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I know the time that this one needs to come in I know that now is the time for no MX to come in I don't care what you call the child no MX needs to come in so Akila I'm putting no MX in there you know I heard I heard that her second name is Ruth, so I put in a third name to say, if you say her second name is Ruth, eh, no MX is coming in as well. So there you are, and you are, and they are busy. Eh, eh, you, you thought that God has forsaken you. You thought that God does not care about you. He stepped into your wound, and he's busy, and he's busy. While you are crying, God is busy knitting. He's busy knitting. He's in those wombs, and he's just busy knitting. You thought that you will not produce. God is sitting, and he's saying, I'm busy forming something. I'm busy putting something together. I'm here to tell you that in your cries, God is busy. I'm trying to preach it like I heard it in my spirit. I thank you, high God. It says, you breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. Body and soul, I am, I am, I am, oh, you marvelous people. Oh, don't let anybody tell you. Don't let anybody body shame you. You know what I like about Pastor Mike? I will tell him anything about his stomach. He does not allow anyone to body shame him. Why? Because he has an understanding that I was marvelously made. I was marvelous. You should see Pastor Michael and Tsako running in the soccer grounds. Every time they run, people laugh, but they have an understanding and they continue to run because if, if my running brings you joy, let it bring you joy. Maybe you've been through some things, so I'm going to let my running bring you joy, my brother. So I'm going to continue because everything about me is marvelously made. So I am going to run the way I am. I am going to walk the way I am. I'm going to shout praises unto God the way I am. There are no bad looking people in here. There are marvelously made looking people in this place. Mm, young people, don't ever allow them to make you feel ugly. Don't allow them to make you feel ugly when you are marvelously made. I worship in adoration. Huh. Let's take it again. You breathed, uh, body and soul, I am marvelously made. 
I worship in adoration. Listen to what the message says. It says, what a creation. What, what a creation. I look in the mirror. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I worship the Lord. You know, I'm like, what a, man. Ooh, what a creation. Ooh, what? Yay! No. You, you know they say take pictures on my good side. I'm like, which one? Which side? Like all, all of the... You, uh, find yourself modeling in, the, in, in front of your mirror. Be the kind of person that says, I'm not just here for dressing up. I'm just like, damn. What a creation. You know me inside out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted, sculpted, sculpted from nothing into something. Mm, you think that God can heal you. I said, you think that God can heal you. You think that God cannot deliver your wayward child. You think that God cannot deliver your husband. You think that God cannot deliver your wife. You think that God cannot turn it around for you when he knows you bit by bit. How you were sculpted from nothing into something, from sickness into health. Like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. How big is God? All the stages of your life. All the stages of your life were spread out before him. The days of my life prepared. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. Before you lived one day, Prizo. <laughs> I'm here to tell somebody even the mistakes that you made, don't catch him by surprise. Don't continue running away. Even your flaws that you made, he knew about them. He knew about them. Don't allow anybody to look at you funny. You know people who look at people funny in church are the people who are hiding things. I know that side believes. The people. <laughs> before you even lived one day, before you lived one day, he knew that he was going to script a story where you are going to have a degree and say that this degree is your pulpit. It is not a way for you to look at yourself and say, look at me now. Because Uncle Brian, I preached about it in the men's and I'm going to preach about it here today to say, Uncle Brian, you have an understanding that with your degree, you were still working at Milky Lane, scooping ice cream. Scooping ice cream, right? You had a choice. You could say, I mean, I'm learned. This is below me. Me, I shall not do this. Because if you look at my qualifications, I mean, I will not do this thing. But you went and you were scooping ice cream because you had an understanding that your degree does not make you puffed up. Your degree is merely a pulpit that is going to minister for you. And there is coming a day where people are going to be healed because of the degree. There is coming a day where your family is going to be delivered because those are the people I'm talking about that are going to be delivered because of your degree. So you decided I'm going to scoop ice cream. Oh, you are going to hear it. We are going to play it online for those that have not heard that man's testimony. And you will be blessed out of your socks. And then you decided after that, I'm just going to go to a firm here in Isando and I'm going to be a cleaner. And you decided with your degree, uh, oh, by the way, maybe let me share what Brian shared with us to say, even the manager at Milky Lane was like, are you sure? Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, because, because that pulpit sometimes, I, yeah, 
I magayegwe ele mutom loss. Okay, anyway, but let's carry on. And he decided he's going to be a sweeper because his family needs to be fed. And he was sweeping in a company. And he was sweeping in a company. And I quote uh, Mamophilia that he says, on a Friday, I came in and I was sweeping. And then I started making up my own story from there when he said he came in on a Friday, Auntie Cheryl. I imagine that he was there and he was sweeping. And he got to this particular department in the, in the, in the, in the whole office block. And he got there and he said, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to distract you. I don't mean to disturb you. But can I just move your bin and empty out your bin and just sweep here quickly? And he put the bin back. And then he went on to the next person. This was on a Friday. And while he was on his way home, there's something about Jesus meeting you while you're on your way home. Because Peter was on his way home. While he was packing up, there's a director that came to Brian and said, whoa. Note that Brian's degree was not talking at this time. Because this director never knew anything about your degree. He just said, when I talk to you. <coughs> hold those tears, hold those tears, not now. When I talk to you, there's something about you that when I talk to you, there's something that you give out. When I talk to you, there's something that flows out of you. I have never seen your qualifications, but when I talk to you, something tells me you are at my level. I've never seen your qualification, but when I talk to you, I, I pray somebody will know that God is saying, when, when I talk to you, please somebody get Brian Tissue. When, when, when I talk to you, when I th there's just something special about you when I talk to you. Something about you, Simon. There's something about you, Simon. Uh, uh, and 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 he, he's remembering back home. You see, the, the the pressure that a man goes through in life is that they always remember back home. They, they remembering back home that uh, I, I left a hungry wife. I, I, I'm remembering back, back, back home that I made a promise to my father in grace. And I said, I will take care of your daughter if you would allow me to marry her. I, I, I'm remembering back home. And, and, and the Lord is like, yeah. I made you say all these things, Brian. I made you say all these things, Simon. I can imagine Simon is washing his nets and he's thinking about, oh, back home, I can't come back home empty-handed. I can't. Maybe if I don't come with this fish, this is the end of the marriage. If I don't come with this, this is the end of everything. M maybe this is th this, this is it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Is there anybody in this room who would say this? I'm at the end. This is it. I, I, I'm washing all these things. I'm doing all the things. I'm cleaning the nets. But but I'm even trying to clean them slow. Oh, please, Pastor Mike, help me preach truth because I, I, I can't be the only man along with Brian. I, I'm, I'm washing this net slowly because I'm dreading to go and see Ruth. I'm washing these nets slowly. But God gets into the boat. Brian, I believe you heard the word, the talking and elevator. The director gets in the boat, gets in the same elevator with the cleaner, with the qualification that he knows nothing about, but because of the way he talks. I had to demonstrate 
that Brian had to get to a particular department and say, sorry guys, can I just move your bill? On Friday, on Friday, <laughs> the director says, please give me your CV. Because clearly, there is something about you. On the weekend, behind the scenes, they tell him later, there was an uproar in a company to say, how dare we have a cleaner like this? On the weekend, there's an uproar in the company to say, how dare we have a cleaner like this? On Monday morning, the people he was telling, sorry, does it just been? Because now they are director on Monday morning. <laughs> if you cannot believe it in scripture, believe that scripture is alive in his life. The, the, the same people, not a different company, the same people. I'm here to tell you that where you work is a pulpit. Where you work, God is forming a pulpit. Where you work, God is ready to flow from you. Where you are working, it might be a call center. It might be an administration. It might be a CEO. It might be managerial. It might be director. Where you work, God is saying to you, this is my pulpit. I got you. It's as though Brian knew what I was going to preach today. He said, Mfundisi, imagine. No, no. Imagine I did not sweep in that company. Because that's where the door was. In the sweeping. In the company. Brian reminded me yesterday. Mfundisi, imagine I just saw it as a boat. And not a pulpit. Imagine I just, oh, this is just a boat. I'm trying to get somebody to be encouraged to say that which you are going through. What's in your hand? Nothing much. That nothing. Sorry. I want to go and sit down. I, how I was sculpted from nothing into something, according to Psalm 139. What's in your hand? N nothing much. God is out here saying, yeah. That's a pulpit. That's, if you would allow me to preach from your pulpit, to teach from the pulpit. And then we read and say, because you see, as a pastor, Pastor Mike, I know that you are also looking forward to Jesus' teaching. All of us want to hear, what did he say? Because I know when he gave that Matthew 5, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. one of the best teachings ever. Like now I'm interested to say, what did he say? And then the Bible says, and then he finished teaching. What were his words? He's finished. So is it, prob is, it, is it possible that the words were not important, but what he was doing and demonstrating to you was what was important? He says, this is Brian, not me. Pastor Mike is my witness. He says, Mfundis, while you are sharing the story, imagine I said no to sweeping. Because I thought nothing of sweeping. Uh, I just preached so well, yeah. Uncle Bree. Because yeah. yeah. you helped me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to make it as though it's me now. <laughs> Imagined I thought nothing of sweeping. <laughs> Somebody entered into our vape this week. And when he entered into our vape, yeah. because this somebody got a job. I said to this somebody, Pastor Mike, oh, the amount of healing that is going to occur at the hospital because Jesus is saying, with your job, 
<laughs> the amount of healing they are about to see. <laughs> because <laughs> you are in there and Jesus is saying, I've opened a door. I didn't open a door for any. I opened, doctors are about to look good is what I said to this somebody. I said the doctors of our vape are about to look good, not because they did anything different, not because they did anything special, but because God got a pulpit into our vape. Some of you thought the pulpit ended at Connect Christian Church, but I'm here to tell you that it is flowing out of that door. It is going to the Parliament of South Africa in Cape Town, and it is getting into Parliament of SA, and the Lord is saying, I have a pulpit. I, I don't know if you can celebrate that. What you are going to celebrate in your life. I, I left Connect. <laughs> That's what they said in COVID time. They said the church has left the building. I know it was Pastor Caesar who said it. And he said, I feel like COVID is a time where God is saying, the church has left the building. And I'm here to tell somebody that the church left the building. But the church got to Balo World. And when the church got to Balo World, it stepped in the form of a Louisa Nguenya. And when Louisa Nguenya got into Balo World, God says, I have a pulpit to work from. I have a pulpit to work through. I have a pulpit. And after the pulpit is been done, been used, I'm going to take the pulpit and I'm throwing it into the deep. And I'm throwing it in deep waters. Do you know what deep waters are? Deep waters are the place where you feel you don't qualify for. Why? because you obeyed and allowed yourself to be a pulpit. Now that I'm done with the pulpit, I'm saying take the pulpit, throw it into the deep. Some might have missed that. The boat was the pulpit. The boat was the pulpit. And at the time it was at the shore. And when he was done teaching, he took the same boat and said, go into the deep. What's the deep? I'm taking you into deep waters. Akila loves singing about this. Like uh, today I was like, come on, come on, gang. Come on, come on. And I was like, ah, oh, she's disobedient. But anyway. <laughs> 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 I was like, today of all days, don't say, <clears throat> you used to say deep waters, you every day. Like, ah, I was like, today you don't, I'm like, come on, Akila. Anytime now, anytime now. I was pacing up and down here. You guys think I was praying. I was listening. Deep waters, deep waters, deep waters, deep waters. I'm even trying to rev Akila up. Deep waters, Ken. Deep waters. Deep waters. Deep waters. Because there's something about God where God is not keeping you into shallow things because he's a deep God. He's a deep Lord. And because he's a deep Lord, he's saying for the things that you need, for the things that you need. I, I need you to go into a deeper place in me. <laughs> it's, only, it's not enough, Pastor Mike, to just shout amen in church. I need you to shout amen as the men were talking yesterday to say I'm also stepping into that which I am praying about. Pastor Mike told you that the men have grown. He was not joking. He said, this is what we were saying yesterday. He said, deep waters. Hey, the men were so anointed yesterday. I know that the ladies were amazing. But, 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 but the men yesterday were all overwhelmed. All over. Hey. It, it was a deep, all overwhelmed. They said, after the Amen. It's now time to walk that amen out. You see some of you are just praying prayers and you're not ready to walk them out. So God is saying now, I was standing at the shore. And at the shore, Deirdre, I told you that your joy would be restored. And he said for joy, yes, my daughter. And it was met with a resounding amen. And as you said, amen, you said, let it be, let it be, 
let it be. And you did what the woman with the issue of blood did, repeatedly said, if I may touch him, I will have joy. If I may follow him, I may have joy. If I may touch him, I'll have I'm joy, joy, joy. I'm walking in joy. Despite the things that I'm going through, I'm joy, joy, joy. I'm walking here and I'm saying I never caught anything. I was ready to give in. And you are telling me, go into the deep. Go into a deeper place with me and you will find. I was ready to throw away this marriage to say I'm done with it. But God is saying, go into the deep. Go deep. Go. If this is not me saying go deep, Papa, Papa, this, this, go deep. Go deep. God is out here saying, go deeper, my child. Go deeper, my child. Lord, I'm down on my knees. Yes, my child. That's where I wanted you. You're about to give in. That's the strength. Go deeper. Let the genes be torn if the genes must be torn. But go deeper. And you are going to rise as you humble yourself. Because I lift up those who are humble. And I oppose the proud. I oppose the proud. To say I am ready to give up is to be proud because it is about you. Anything proud says I am. I, I, I. I'm ready to throw in the towel when God is not saying throw in the towel. I, 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 I. Whether it sounds good, the I, whether it sounds bad, I need my joy. I have seen so many people divorcing because I'm in a peace, shame. I chose peace. Go into the world. I repeat this statement. Go into the world. Not the world go into you. Can I try it again, Uncle Bree? Go into the world. Not the world go into you. I will not make the rhetorics of the world. I, I'm here to tell you that there are some people at your workplaces that don't favor you. Because Jesus had Pharisees. But in your workplace, the moment you realize that this is a pulpit, is the moment you realize that Jesus had Pharisees. And Pharisees were supposed to be the teacher of the time. Have you ever been hated by people that you feel should understand? My manager should understand. Jesus had Pharisees. They're the ones that were supposed to understand. They never did. But the pulpit continued. In the face. <laughs> Brought so much confusion in the face of those that didn't understand. Uh, brought so much plotting to the ones who were supposed to, they were plotting on how to do it. The Bible declares they were plotting how to kill him. They were plotting how to, the plotting how to get him out and they couldn't. Wrecked the pulpit. I, I, I want you to know this. Every single time you go home, that I'm a pulpit in this home. I want you to go to work and say, I'm a pulpit in this work. I want you to go into the world and say, I'm a, I'm a pulpit. Presh, come stand next to me so they can see how beautiful my little sister is as I close. Can you see how pretty she looks? Then she opens a company. And then she has an understanding of the company. And then she says, this is not mine. So she says, what do you have to say about this? Do you know what she's standing on? She's standing on a word that is railing behind her. And the word says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to bring you harm but to prosper you, plans to give you hope, 
and a good future. Her company, if you walk into it, is got that. Because she might have realized, she might have not. But I know she did, ne? Because this child was raised by me. Before Uncle John and Aunt Geraldine, this child was raised. These hands. See these hands. These hands. These hands. <laughs> these hands. This one. Yeah. And, uh, Uncle John was just like, there was a time where Uncle John's car broke down in the youth. He's just like, as long as it broke down here, Pastor, take it inside. Don't worry about the car. Fix the rest. Because he understood. These hands. <laughs> Say, they raise giants in the Lord. Okay? <laughs> but, 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 uh, but, but besides that, yeah, all jokes aside now, I'm joking, the Lord raised her. Whether she understood it or she didn't understand it, but I'd like to believe that she understood it. She had an understanding that her business is a pulpit. Had an understanding that her business is a pulpit. In fact, Precious does not compromise anything in that business. 